Ardbeg Kelpie, is it worth 200 bucks? Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Ardbeg Kelpie Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, and I bought this a couple years ago. I've got it down below the shoulder, but to be honest with you, I haven't spent a lot of time with it. So before I started recording this video, I poured myself a glass, I have had a couple uh, glasses, and uh, I, I got quite a different impression of it now than when I originally opened it. Now, uh, before getting into this whiskey, I want to talk about a few things. First of all, what is a Kelpie? Uh, there are some sources online that think the name Kelpie is derived from kelp. You know, that vegetation that floats around in the ocean. But that's not a Kelpie. The legend of the Kelpie has a lot of variations to it. Uh, basically, it's supposed to be a mythological character that can transform itself and sometimes appears as a horse. Uh, when I went to Scotland and was traveling to uh, Oban Distillery and then we went uh, to uh, Isla, uh, we drove by these uh, gigantic metal statues, you can see them from off the side of the freeway, of these giant horse heads and these are the Kelpie. Now we didn't get, stop and see them, so those uh, photos and videos you just saw, uh, I didn't shoot those, those are uh, off the interwebs. Uh, but I thought it was really interesting that somebody took the idea of the Kelpie as a horse head and then made these giant statues with them. Now, if you've ever seen a picture of the devil, perhaps a cartoon or something like that, and he's got hooves, right? Um, that's taken from the Kelpie. So the Kel Kelpie is seen as sort of a monstrous creature. Uh, it then got morphed with some uh, Christian mythology in becoming uh, an image of the devil. But um, Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, is also said to be a Kelpie. So uh, in the Middle Ages, you see these, uh, these paintings uh, with uh, of the devil, and he's got these hooves, and these made their way basically into uh, cartoons. Uh, <laughs> we have today of the devil, and he's always pictured as, of course, being red, having horns, and um, having these cloven hooves. Now, you got to be careful when you mention the devil, because he might just show up. Smash that like button and subscribe right now. <laughs> And if I were you, you know, I would listen to them. You should give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Alrighty, so uh, the other things I want to talk about regarding Kelpie is its production. It has been aged, first of all, in ex-bourbon casks, like a traditional Ardbeg, perhaps like an Ardbeg 10. And then spent some time in some uh, black sea oak casks from uh, Russia, which give it a, a spicy character. Now. They aren't specific as to what um, genus or uh, species of oak it is. If you say French oak, that doesn't tell you what species it is. There's several different species in France. So if you say French oak and you're not saying anything more than that, that doesn't really tell you a lot. Because different species uh, or varieties within Quercus uh, have different characteristics. Now, same thing if you say American oak. Right? There are at least three that I know of that are used in wine production. And so unless you get more specific as to the type of oak, merely saying American oak doesn't do you a whole lot. However, not only is it a matter of being American oak with a species of oak uh, under the genus of Quercus, but where are they grown? Right, Because different climates will have different growth rates, which will give you different spaces in between the rings, and that will affect the character of the uh, oak as well. So uh, you can get uh, oak from, say, um, Arkansas or uh, Missouri or somewhere else in the United States, and it's going to give you a different character. And usually wine and whiskey producers, they find their favorites, what they like, and then they specifically contract to get oak from those particular forests. Likewise, uh, cognac and armagnac in France, they use limousin oak. That's a particular style of oak. And Burgundy uses oak casts uh, made from uh, the forest in, in their neighborhood, right? So merely saying French oak, American oak doesn't do a whole lot. Or even just saying, you know, black oaks, black sea oak doesn't do you a whole lot. You need to get more specific. But uh, from having previously tasted this whiskey, and as we'll get into it, I'll give you my notes. 
This I do. This I somewhat convinced. This does have that spicier character. I, I mentioned it in my review of the Cory Reckon that is typical of um, uh, Quercus Petraea, but can't be dogmatic on it. That's just a guess based on previous experience with that oak. All right, and then it is bottled at 46% alcohol by Avon. It is unchill filtered and has no added coloring just the way that we like it so it has this sort of you know lemon lime uh, character to it and on the nose on the nose it smells sweet i get to actually get a little bit of honeysuckle floral notes i don't often mention floral notes in particularly peated whiskeys but it's definitely there a little bit of citrus some lemon lime character it's one of the interesting things about peat. Peat can be expressed in a lot of different things in, in terms of aromas and flavors. Most think of it associated with you know, fire and smoke, but sometimes peat can come across as chocolate. Sometimes it can come across as um, spice, like black pepper. Sometimes I get some, I can get like a black liquor, licorice character to it. And not only just not sm smoke, but different types of smoke, you know, sort of a fresh bonfire. Some become, sometimes it can be like a creosote, you know, that black stuff they put on uh, telephone poles. Sometimes it can be like a fire that has been put out. Sometimes it can seem very, very ashy. So even saying this peated or smoky, there's a lot of different flavors variances that you can get uh, from peated smoke uh, whiskeys. All right, definitely got a little bit of vanilla in there, some lighter caramels. It smells sweet on the nose. I don't get campfire smoke. I get more spice and uh, lighter chocolate notes. And it's really got the sweet honeysuckle uh, character going through there. All right, on the palate. Mm. One more. It has a nice vis uh, viscosity to it, sort of a silky, glossy mouthfeel. I get the sweet up front, maybe lemon, lime, maybe a little bit of tropical, slight honey notes. And then in the mid palate, I get more of sort of the black pepper, uh, lighter chocolates and some caramels, and then plenty of vanilla on, on the back end. So it has a pretty nice development from the front to the mid to, to the back end. I'm still tasting it now as I'm talking, really, really I like it. Uh, I think it's got real nice balance to it. I would like the ABV be up a little higher. I would like a little bit more punch of, of flavor. I would like a little bit more intense flavor, but as it is now straight from the bottle, it's actually quite nice. Now, what would I give it in terms of a score? I'm gonna go a solid 89 points, a solid 89 points. Um, if it had more intense flavors, which would probably require more higher ABV, uh, I would probably take it up above 90. But as it is now, and where it's at now, um, and it's fine on ice, it does fine on ice. It, I had a drop of water, it doesn't necessarily radically change it, uh, but it doesn't hurt it uh, either. So, I like it, 89, I think it's a really, really good score. However, the next issue is, what about the price? So when this originally came out, I paid, I believe it was $128. Uh, if you look online, there's a lot of shops that still list this uh, in their inventory, but they're sold out, it's out of stock, and they'll list it around 160 to 180. For those who have it in stock, for what I can find, search around on the internet, here in the United States, they're having around the $200 range. So some websites will keep things in their inventory on the internet, even though they don't intend to ever um, fill it again, particularly the limited releases. For whatever reason, they don't remove them off the website, perhaps because people are searching for those whiskeys. And so even if they don't have them in their inventory, it'll bring you to their website and maybe they can sell you something else, right? So they'll keep it listed, even though they will never, ever, ever get it again. I don't like it when they do that. I think it's dishonest. That being said, do I think this is worth $200? All I have to do is ask what other art bags are readily available that I can get for even half of that. And you know what I'm gonna say, you can already hear, hear, hear me say it. What would I recommend under $100 from art bag? That's right, 
Corey Reckon and Ugadol. Corey Reckon and Ugadol. In fact, you can get a bottle of Ugadol and you can get a bottle of Corey Reckon for the price that this is selling for. Now, do I think it's a good whiskey? Yes. You know, if someone gave me a bottle, would I be happy? Yes. If you're looking to, uh, you know, complete an Ardbeg collection, would I buy one? Yes. Are you, if you're an Ardbeg fan, would I buy one? Yes. If you're just looking for a really nice peated whiskey, would, would I buy it? No, I would recommend something else, right? I, you might even go for, you know, <laughs> four bottles of the Ardbeg 10 instead of this. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I probably would. Can I have, if I had a choice between a bottle of this, of the Kelpie, and four bottles of the Ardbeg 10, or even four, uh, you know, when, yeah, three or four bottles of the Ardbeg 10, in a heartbeat, without even blinking an eye, you know, give me the four bottles of the Ardbeg 10. Uh, I think that highly of the Ardbeg 10. Alrighty, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. And if you have different thoughts, different opinion about the Ardbeg copy, I would like to hear from you down in the comments down below. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.